grade four, five, and six, and welcome back to the sofa. We are going to start today with a very quick review of note naming, and then you get to play a game. So I want to start with the review just to get it back into our heads. I think it's always good to have a little bit of a refresher first before we do the practicing. All right, so here we go. I've got our staff up here on the board. Our musical staff is when we have our five lines, right? And when we have our five lines, in between those lines, there are one, two, three, four, four spaces. Five lines, four spaces. Now we use our fancy dancy curly cue symbol, this guy here, the treble clef, when we play our instruments that we have at school, like recorder or xylophone, right? Treble clef just tells us which pitch we are going to start on. We are going to start the bottom line on E. That's all it tells us, that our bottom line is going to be the pitch E. If anyone would like to sing our favorite note naming song, our every good boy does fine on the line, do, 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 I will link that down below. So just like I just said, treble clef tells us that our very bottom line is going to be the letter E. So that's where we're gonna start, is with letter E. There's our E. Do you see how the line is going through that great big whole note, through the note head? So it's on top of the line. We say that this note is on the line. And now we are going to move in alphabetical order. So we are going to go up one. What comes next in the alphabet? F. Do you notice, because we moved just side by side, our F is the F on a line? No, it's not. It doesn't have a line running through the middle of it. It's in between two lines. So we say that our F is on a space or in a space, right? So E on a line, F is in a space. What comes next in the alphabet? G. G is next door to F. G is side by side. So we moved right next door. So now G is on a line. We're just gonna keep this pattern going. But what comes next in the musical alphabet? In our regular alphabet, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Is there an H in the musical alphabet? Have you ever seen a letter H on the xylophones? No, the musical alphabet stops at letter G. That's where it ends and it goes back to the beginning of the alphabet and starts all over again. So after G is going to come, A. There's our A in the space. What comes next? B. There's our B on the next line. What comes next? C. There's our C in the space. What comes next? D. Next, E. Next, F. There's our F on the top line. So now those are all of the notes going in alphabetical order all the way up our staff. All right, so let's say we had this pitch right here, this note. Instead of having to start all the way down at this bottom line, we know the bottom line is E, right? And counting all the way up the whole alphabet and going E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Ooh, that's an E. Instead of having to go through the whole alphabet, there's a way we can use that makes it a little bit quicker to remember. To make it a little bit easier, we are going to divide our pitches, divide our notes into two groups. One group is going to be all the notes that are on the line, and one group is going to be all the notes that are in the spaces. So here's all of our lines. We have E, that's on a line. We have G on a line. We have B on a line. We have D on a line. And we have F on a line. So to remember those notes that are on the lines, to remember the order E, G, B, D, F, we can think every good boy does fine on the line. It rhymes with the word line so that we remember these are the letters that belong on the lines. Every good boy does fine. Those are lines. Every good boy does fine on the line. Every good boy does fine. Those are lines. Now, if we look at the ones that are left over, our notes that are in the spaces, we have F in a space, 
we have A in a space, we have C in a space, and we have E in a space. If we take those four letters, what does that spell? F A C E spells the word face. And face rhymes with space. Those are the letters. That's the order of the pitches in the spaces. Now, the most important thing we have to remember is that we always start at the bottom, right? Whenever we're figuring out a note, if we're thinking the lines, we have to start down here at the bottom. If we're thinking the spaces, we also have to start down here at the bottom. Every good boy does fine. Every starts at the bottom. It doesn't start at the top. F-A-C-E, face. F starts down at the bottom. It doesn't start at the top. So let's practice. Take a look at this note here. Is this note on a line or in a space? It's in a space, right? It's in between two lines. So what rhymes with space? The word face. Let's start counting at the bottom. F A. If we spell the word face, F A, this note is going to be the pitch A. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. Is it on a line or in a space? It's on a line. It has the line going right through the middle of it, right? So line, you remember our saying for line, it rhymes with it. It goes, every good boy does fine on the line. So here we go. We start at the bottom. Every good boy does. D, this note is a letter D. Last one, here we go. Is that pitch on a line or in a space? On a line, it has the line going through the middle of it. What's our saying for lines? Every good boy does fine. So here we go, start at the bottom. Every good boy, that is a B. All right, last but not least, our very top line is an F. Could we keep going up in pitch? Can music keep going up in pitch? Of course it can. So what letter comes after the letter F? G. So to write the G on our staff, we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna put the G right next to the F, right above it, above that top line. There we go, there's our G. What if we wanted to go up even one more pitch? Could we do it? Yeah, we could. What comes after G in the musical alphabet? A. So to make A, A would have to be on a line. We are all out of lines, so guess what? We're just gonna make our own. And instead of making a giant long one, we're just gonna make a tiny little short one. It's gonna look like this. There we go. There's our A floating at the top of the staff. We could do the same thing down here, couldn't we? Could we go one pitch lower than E? We sure could. What comes before E in the alphabet? D, that's right. So if we go one underneath this first line, that's gonna be our pitch. D. There we go. There it is. So D is the space below E. What if we wanted to go even one more? Could we? Of course we can. What pitch is it going to be? What comes before D in the musical alphabet? C. That's right. So C is not going to be in this space, right? It has to be one lower than D. So we are going to have to add a, a line. That's right. Just like we did over there, how we added a line above. Over here, we're going to add a line below. We're getting kind of squished in here, but we made it fit. There it is, there's our C. All right, so because normally we would be playing some games in class right now to practice naming those notes and get better at figuring them out faster, I thought, why not play a game still? So I found a game online. It's a website that you can play to practice naming your notes. The website is called Staff Wars. It's kind of like Star Wars, but with the musical staff. So I've included the link down below for you to click on, but there's two very important things that you need to know, that you need to do before you start playing the game. In the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, there's a little picture and beside it, it says the word range. Range is how high or how low the notes go. So you are going to have to click on that to pick the right range that we have practiced. We have practiced the most 
our five lines and our four spaces. We have practiced every good boy does fine and F-A-C-E. Those are the ones we have practiced the most. So you need to click on that range button so that it looks like this. Today I also showed you those notes that are above the staff and the notes that are below the staff, the ones that are kind of floating above and below. If you are familiar with those or if you would like a challenge, you can click on the range button so that it looks like this. You need to set the range, otherwise it's going to include notes that are really, really high or really, really low that we haven't practiced yet. Next, you need to click at the bottom left hand side of the screen on the treble clef symbol. So make sure you set the range and you pick treble clef and then you can start playing. All right, grade four, five, and six, good luck with your staff wars. May the force be with you. I will see you soon. Let's collab out together. Ready? One, two, three.